right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Um, the terminology is up for debate, what we call these things. Um, but whatever you want to call us, we are here live <laughs> online. Um, hopefully only good things you call us. Yeah. Not bad things. <laughs> We're here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the show is recorded, however, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and um, watch the recordings of any of our previous shows. And I'll show you that where that is at the end of today's show. Um, we post a recording if there are any slides or documents or handouts that are included from presentations and um, links to websites that were mentioned during presentations. They're all gathered together into a... Um, uh, archive spot. Um, both the show, the live show, and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. Mm -hmm. So please do share with any of your colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, whoever you think might be interested in any of our topics. Um, they are welcome to join us live on Wednesdays or watch any of our recordings. Um, our we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, mini training sessions, demos, uh, interviews, uh, Basically, the only criteria is that it's something library related, either something libraries are doing, something could be of use to libraries, some new uh, resource or, or um, service that could be of use to them. Sometimes we're a little outside the box thinking, but we always link it back to libraries. That's our focus here. Um, we have um, Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations, and we sometimes have guest speakers. And today we have a mixture of that. Um, to my left here is Richard Miller, who is our Library Development uh, Director here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, and um, to his left is Reggie Carlson, who's from the Nebraska Community Foundation. Um, she's the Communications Director there. Mm -hmm. And we also on the line um, two libraries that are going to be chiming in a little later, and we'll get to them and introduce them um, later on, yep. I suppose, yeah, That's good. Um, to talk about this. And mm -hmm. um, what we're going to be discussing this morning is um, getting money, uh, <laughs> specifically <laughs> grants for some for small town um, libraries, public libraries in Nebraska. And I'll just hand over to you guys to take it over, boy, and explain what's going on. Okay, well, Reggie and I decided we'd do kind of a question and answer format, and for those of you who know me, you'll be surprised that I'm not doing most of the talking today. It's <laughs> going to be Reggie. I'm going to ask the questions, and she's going to give the answers because actually she's a little bit closer to the money than I am anyway. So Reggie Carlson and I have worked mm -hmm. together, and she just told me she's been there nine years. I can't believe how fast this has passed. I worked with her predecessor as well when these Kurtz Bennett Donor Advised Fund uh, monies first became available, but it's really gotten rolling in mm -hmm. uh, during her time here. So mm -hmm. we'll do a question and answer format. I'm going to ask the questions, and she's going to give you all the information <laughs> you need to know about these grants. Mm -hmm. All right, so Reggie, can you tell us what the Crutes Bennett Donor Advised Fund grants are, first of all? Yes, but first, first, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to explain to everybody how you really pronounce the name. And that is the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. And it's, you know, it takes a while. You said Kreutz. Kreutz. Did I say it right? Uh, I, I think not. Kreutz. I think you say yeah. Kreutz. Oh, Kreutz. Yeah. All right, I'll but change almost, my pronunciation. But almost every phone call that I get is about the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. Oh, but it is a Kreutz. Yeah. So think of, <laughs> oi, my gosh. <laughs> oi, Kreutz. <laughs> oi, Kreutz. All right. Anyway, these are, these are grants that are made possible through an endowment that was established by the late uh, Shirley Kreutz Bennett, who was a lifelong educator. Uh, she believed that everyone should have access to a world of information, and she specifically intended for the funds to support small town, small town libraries, libraries that uh, have populations of 3,000 or less. And so in a nutshell, that's what the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advice Funds are. Very good. Okay. There. Okay. <clears throat> Well, before we get into the details of the grants themselves, could you explain a little bit about what the term donor advised fund means and how that works through the through the uh, your corporation? Okay, briefly, uh, like almost all community foundations in the United States, the Nebraska Community Foundation uh, offers people with charitable intentions the opportunity to set up a fund within our organization. So a donor makes a tax deductible 
charitable contribution, usually fairly significant, and that establishes a fund that then the community, Nebraska Community Foundation administers. That money is held or within the R Foundation, and the donor or his or her advisors can determine what charitable organizations they'd like to support. So they let the Nebraska Community Foundation know. We handle the distribution of the funds, and one of the reasons that people choose <clears throat> to use a donor advice fund instead of a, a private foundation is that we do all the paperwork. We do all of the tax uh, reporting and all the uh, auditing and all of the receiving the part. <laughs> and all of that stuff that could really overwhelm some of the small town community leaders that are, you know, um, running these programs. And so our donor advisors uh, then are left to do the fun part, and that is just granting the money. Well, in the description of the program today, we mentioned that the nieces and nephews of, of <clears throat> Shirley Kreutz, ben, <clears throat> hey, I said it right, yes, you did. <laughs> are involved in this whole thing. And can you describe how their decision making about these helps to fulfill the wishes of the donor, Shirley? Right. At Nebraska Community Foundation and any community foundation, donor intent is the number one uh, concern that we have. So before Shirley died, she made it very clear in her will that she wanted to establish a fund that would be advised by her first surviving siblings, uh, but then her nieces and nephews. And she made it clear also that she wanted to help small town libraries. However, she did not want to cause an undue burden on her family for an unreasonable number of years or, you know, forever, that which is what an endowment is, is it's a permanent fund. So Nebraska Community Foundation suggested that she set up what we call a term endowment. And that means that the money is held within our foundation for a number of years, and in this case, it's about 10 years. Um, but then the funds uh, uh, are spent out. So the funds are invested, the earnings on those investments are used to make grants every year. And in addition, I should mention that Shirley did not expect her nieces and her nephews to be experts in funding libraries, and so they asked Nebraska Community Foundation to administer the program, and also they asked that um, uh, the Library Commission provide guidance to the fund advisors. And so that's how this whole thing works. Richard and I work together uh, with the nieces and nephews and to, to uh, provide the grants once a year. Okay, yeah, and it's fun too. I, re I really enjoy meeting them. I, I forget their names from year to year, but then they reacquaint me with their names. <laughs> They're a great bunch of people. They all are from, I would say, South Central Nebraska. Yeah. Donathan, well, St. Paul. What, are any of them in Harvard anymore where she went to high school? Um, no. No, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that there are three categories of grants, and if you could spend some time reviewing those, we'd appreciate it. Why can't I get this to review? Use the right arrow. There All right. Go. Thank you. Yeah, that All right. Tell us about the three categories of grants, if you would, please. Okay. Three categories. There's planning grants, and those lead to accreditation. Enhancement grants, and they lead to um, uh, those, those are for enhancing library services and programs. And facility grants, which, of course, like it sounds, is used for renovating or restoring or rehabilitating your current facilities. Uh, let's first talk about the planning grants. <clears throat> Excuse me. That time of year. <laughs> Planning grants are, are for non-accredited public libraries, and they must the money must be used to work toward accreditation. Uh, activities that could be funded would include education, planning, collaboration. Very importantly, uh, the money could be used to support salary or stipend for personnel uh, to extend your library hours, which is so often very ne necessary to get accredited. Uh, it can also be used to provide uh, to to help um, support additional hours of staff time who are working on um, accreditation requirements and planning and meetings. So that is, you know, what the kind of activities that planning grants go to. Um, there's a $500 minimum that you can apply for, and you can apply for up to $2,500. It's a very generous one-to-one -one match. Uh, one, uh, a dollar in Kreutz Bennett funding, a dollar in, in local funding. Uh, in this particular uh, category, in-kind matches cannot be allowed, meaning that uh, your volunteer board members cannot be, you know, cannot, cannot count for your in-kind match. 
Uh, the time frame is multi-year grants are possible. And you say, why would you need multi-year grants for planning? To tell you the truth, some mm -hmm. of our libraries do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if, um, <clears throat> if your planning process, uh, it takes more than two, more than one year, we, we will invite a proposal uh, if you can show us the need. Uh, the second category of... Let me talk for just a minute sure, about that, sure. if I could. We have had two public libraries in our state so far, one of which had never been accredited, which became accredited through this, <laughs> one of which had actually lost their accreditation through, I won't go into the ugly details, but uh, they actually <laughs> regained their accreditation. And so this is really, really interesting. And, and Reggie mentioned in particular that often the open hours and staffing is often the thing that gets the libraries into difficulty with trying to become accredited. And this mm -hmm. is so helpful in doing that. I'm mm -hmm. I'm so glad that the nieces and nephews and Reggie and Jeff over at the at the group said, yeah, this we'll do this because this is something that leading these smaller libraries to accreditation results in so many benefits for them. So I really applaud the the uh, folks for doing that. Right, and at the time that the courts been at <clears throat> donor advised fund was established. I think that there was almost a hundred libraries that were not accredited at the time. But so I don't know. I'm hoping that 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 number decreases. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Should we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay. The second uh, group of uh, grants are enhancement grants, and these are for accredited libraries. You have to be accredited, and um, they're used to create community education and outreach programs uh, and services. Uh, we especially look at services that benefit low-income individuals or families or new Americans or, or uh, underserved populations. Uh, this, these grant monies can be used for existing programs or new programs. And uh, the thing you want to consider, however, is that routine costs such as utilities and general maintenance are not eligible. Uh, microfilming and digitization project pr proposals at this time are not eligible as well. Uh, the other thing is that equipment such as uh, computers and software uh, programs are not eligible unless they are only a component part of a much larger project. So I guess an example would be a makers program, a mm -hmm. makers club program in a library that uh, uh, was, was having a volunteer or a stipend person come in and run a program and uh, was purchasing a, equipment to, to help to, to make that program possible to help uh, kids learn how to program computers and, and, and do digital printing and that sort of thing. So in that case, the computer program and software wasn't the focus of the program. Right. The focus of the program was the teaching of the kids. Right. So. Let me I'm talk. hoping that, that was clear. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> okay. was clear. Let me talk for just a minute about both the planning grants and the enhancement grants, talk about the multi-year grants. And one of the reasons that uh, that's really a good thing is that let's suppose, for example, that you want to move your library toward accreditation or that you want to start a new program under these enhancement grants. Well, if you want to sustain that over time, getting your locale to come up with additional funding that becomes part of the library's budget, you often can't do that within one year or less than a year. So that's why the multi-year grants are really good. So we really appreciate the fact that you guys are allowing that. Right. And so often what you need to do is show success before somebody's willing to yeah. invest in ongoing success. And so enhancement grants um, um, can can be helpful that way. I believe in, it's, is it in Valley? that yes. uh, we, uh, Valley was able to hire a part-time youth program specialist this past summer and uh, using a grant from Coit's Bennett Donor Advised Fund. And the program was so successful that she is thinking that, you know, maybe next year, maybe the year after that, she can get those fundings from the sit from the village mm -hmm. to, to, you know, make that part of the, the regular budget. So. Yeah, this is a good way of showing that the service is, is needed and wanted by the community if they see that that uh, using the grant to get that person to run that program mm -hmm. look at what happened now mm -hmm. maybe we should keep it going so yeah. look at the numbers you know mm -hmm. the increase in, in uh, patronage yeah. and that sort of thing yeah we originally planned to have Valley on the presentation today but unfortunately for us but fortunately for her she's traveling she's on vacation so oh, she couldn't yeah. do it but it had some great <laughs> photos to show too yeah um, 
For this particular area of grants, the annual amount that you uh, uh, need to look, be looking at is you need to be applying for at least $1,000, but you can apply for up to a maximum of $20,000. And once again, a very generous match of one to one. In this particular area, 50% of the match can be in kind. So if you've got volunteers running your program, you may be able to uh, count those volunteer hours uh, uh, as, as part of your local match. Um, and yes, multi-year grants are, are allowed. Uh, the next one is facility grants. And it's interesting, when we first did our first round of grant making, and I believe that was 2012, was when the first grants went out, almost all of them were for, for facilities. And as the years have gone by, uh, we're seeing more and more enhancement grants. And uh, I don't know if that's, if people just couldn't think of ideas at the time or, or, or if they just immediately thought of facility improvement, you know, when it came to asking for money. But anyway, uh, facility grants are for accredited um, uh, libraries only. They're for the construction of a new facility or rehabbing an existing facility. There is some preference given to libraries that uh, have a, are historic. The Carnegie libraries, however, the Fund Advisory Committee understands that sometimes rehabbing an old building just simply is not reasonable. Mm -hmm. And it's much more efficient and effective and uh, um, will meet the needs better and more effectively uh, if a new facility is built. And so they're aware of that. Um, it's all, they also look at uh, programs that are libraries that have a long-term sustainability plan. Um, very important to them. So the grant minimum that you can request is $5,000. The maximum, again, is $20,000. Generous match of one-to-one, -one, but in-kind matches are not allowed. So. If you know if you've got a great volunteer who's willing to you know pour your cement, that's terrific. But we can't count his hours. We can you know uh, count uh, you know we can buy the cement. Uh, one important thing to remember about facility grants, because sometimes these projects take a long time. Um, you know you may be doing parts of the project at at one point in time and then continuing on and continuing on. The Croix a Donor Advised Fund cannot fund. Uh, costs that have already been incurred. In other words, if you've already built this room and paid the vendor for it, we cannot reimburse you for those costs. So that's that's a requirement. Anything else on that? I don't think so. We've had uh, we've had a good number of, of libraries that have participated in this whole thing. In fact, I, I talked to Reggie about this, and we haven't got this straight yet. But I think one thing that really be useful is on our website at the commission if we maybe have a historical record of which libraries have received which grants and how much, I think that would really be good. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I think we'll work that out sometime mm -hmm. after this show is over. That's one that we, <clears throat> I know, we have that grants database. This isn't part of that that we have? No, 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 because oh, okay. that's only for grants from the commission. Ah, okay. But we, since we have the link to, to Kreutz Bennett, right. I said it right again, yes, yes, to Kreutz Bennett, mm -hmm. uh, I was just thinking that maybe we could have a list there oh, just sure. at that yeah. point. So we'll mm -hmm. talk about that. That'd be great. It can be done. All right, well, now that we have a pretty good understanding of the three categories of grants, why don't you talk to us about how the process works, what the due dates are, and all that sort of thing, Reggie. All right, well, it's really, really easy because I have written grants all of my life, well, all of my adult life, and uh, I know how complicated mm -hmm. they can be. <clears throat> that was not the intention <clears throat> here. So um, all you have to do is if you think that you have an eligible project after you've you know, downloaded you know, listen to this program. You can download the guidelines and the short application form for uh, from our website, and you can get to that um, that do download area from the commission's website as well. And we'll we'll talk about that at the end of the program when we talk about contact information. Anyway, the short application mainly just establishes you know whether your library is um, a public library. Uh, whether it is uh, whether the funds are going to the library or the library foundation, so it has to be a public library or a 501c3 charitable organization like a like a library foundation, uh, <clears throat> and it's very important uh, that uh, you are accredited if you are applying for either the enhancement or the facility grants. And non-accredited libraries can only apply for planning grants uh, uh, at this at this point in time. Uh, basically. 
All you have to do in this short application that you download <clears throat> is explain the purpose of the project, the total budget, uh, how you plan to raise or commit to the matching funds. Um, short applications are due October 1st. And what will happen is uh, if you are eligible and the project seems reasonable, we'll invite you to support uh, or to, to submit a, a full proposal. And what that full proposal is, is just uh, providing a little bit more detail, more detailed budget, um, just uh, explain, just offering the same explanation in the short proposal, but just expanding on it a little bit. And that uh, long proposal or full proposal is not due until January. I think one of the things I'd say as we've worked with the nieces and nephews over the years is that that idea of demonstrating <clears throat> actual and real and solid local support is very important to them because when they look at these applications, you know, they get they get recommendations from us here at the commission and from Reggie and so forth, but I can tell that over the years they have said, you know, is this really something that is likely to be sustained, likely to be supported? <clears throat> Is there is there real support in the local community for this? And I think that's important to mm -hmm. them. So be very careful about that. Right. The other thing I would say uh, is, especially for facilities grants, um, if you can get, uh, if you can submit copies of actual bids on things, uh, the 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 nieces and nephews appreciate that because once again, we're not experts on putting up drywall and so <laughs> it was it really is helpful if you can have bids but you know you don't have to do that for the short application you just need to that will be that will come when you submit your full application in January I noticed also that they're very practical people so they, they don't they don't go much for show they they want to see actual mm -hmm. actual information mm -hmm. all right well let's see uh, we're going to talk to libraries now, aren't we? Yeah, I think <laughs> that's it. Let me just double check. What's our next slide? Yeah, we're well, going to talk to libraries first. Well, you're going to show where yeah. we get to it. On well, yeah. if for those of you, uh, probably you'd most likely go to our website at the Nebraska Library <clears throat> Commission. There are flyout menus from the left-hand side. Notice there's a flyout menu under grants, funding, and e-rate. And Krista has put a big red arrow <laughs> right there on the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund grants. So you can get to it from there, mm -hmm. or you can go to the website from uh, yeah. Nebraska Community Foundation. And that Foundation. will bring you to that link that's on the previous slide. That actually, when you click on that, it actually pops right out to, yeah, just go back one, it to back. that. Whoops. Yeah, oops. Yeah. yeah. Too many. Keep going. There. There. It'll, it'll be actually Thank directly you. right into their page. Right. Now, if we decide to put up a list of people <coughs> who have actually received it, that might change at <clears> some <throat> point, because we may then have an inter- intermittent page that will list that, but sure. it'll get used to something about it. <laughs> okay. Well, right now we're going to talk to those two people who have been nicely hanging on for so long from a couple of libraries that received the grants. And as I told you, Valley is not on here, but uh, Reggie, why don't you tell us who is on and who's going to be speaking to us today? Okay. Well, from Genoa, yep, we've that's... got Tammy Team. Is that how you pronounce your name, Tammy? No, it's Tammy Theme. Theme. Okay. Well, I had that wrong. Tammy Theme. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good to visit with you again. Um, yes. Yeah, this, is, this is Genoa Public Library. Tammy will be talking about uh, the grant that they received in uh, February 2016 for $2,000, and I'll let you talk about the program yourself. But and we will also be talking to uh, Anne Qu Quigley in Valentine about their facilities improvement grant. So do we want to, Tammy, do we want to talk to Tammy first? Yep. Sure, go ahead, Tammy, take it away. Good morning. I am the library director at Chenoa Public Library, and we were fortunate enough to get a grant. Um, what, our, what our goal was to, was to have a maker space. <laughs> we had such a successful children's programming that the children wanted more to do. So... We had a wonderful space beneath the windows. We had a window seat made by the local shop class at Twin River High School. So all we had to pay for were the materials. And it had a front open storage. So we bought containers that would fit in there. And for those containers, we purchased things such as Legos, Meg Formers, Play-Doh, Snap Circuits, Fashion Plates, Curler Beads, Spiral Spark, Ozobot, Zoob, plus many other things. These were all type STEM type items. 
science, technology, engineering, math, things that will enhance their creativity and creative thinking. We also purchased several board games. These we used during our reading programs for the older children for Get in the Game. The games promote strategy, logical thinking, and then there's other games such as Apples to Apples where if you're familiar with it, it has word definitions, so it's a sneaky way of getting them to learn during the summer. We'd like to incorporate some sort of family board game nights with these games come winter time. We purchased books for babies, kids. These come with a bib and a board book and different pamphlets talking about how wonderful it is to read to your children and a card that they can exchange for a real library card. Try to promote reading early for our community members. Um, back to the makerspace items. We have kids come in here every day and sometimes we'll have, for a small town of a thousand people and community members, we'll have 14 to 20 kids come in to do different activities just on their own. And the great thing about that is once the kids come in, they'll check out library books, kids who may normally would not have come in. And they also tell their friends because we have different kids come in all the time. And what's exciting is without the grant, there's no way our regular library budget would have been able to sustain or get this kind of thing. So I am very appreciative of it. Any questions? Go ahead. Can you talk about that window seat storage thing that we're looking at right now with a little girl sitting on it? Yes, this is what our Twin River shop class built. It cost about $67 for all the materials. <laughs> and I have to get some pillows because it's a popular spot for the kids to kick back and read or play or sit and visit. It has storage in the front, so it fits plastic containers really nicely with the lids to separate all the different makerspace items. Well, I have been to your library, and I know it's quite small, so I think the extra storage for that particular purpose was really a great idea you guys had. Thank you. Sure. Hey, you know what? The kids are really cute there in Genoa, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Who is this? Can you see that photo? That, that's not my library. Oh, this might be a picture from, you had some pictures from Valley that were in there. We weren't supposed to. Oh, okay. okay. I don't know. Is that one of your kids? No, not that one. Well, okay. <laughs> well, the kids must be cute in Valley also. Okay. <laughs> These are what were on the thing that you said. Yeah. A lot of great, right. lot of great uh, children's programming going on um, in the last couple years. I'm really, really pleased to have these creative people thinking thinking about the kids in their community. And Tammy, it's so nice to be able to know how to pronounce your last name along with Kreutz Bennett. Now we can say <laughs> Tammy theme. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Can I mention one more thing? Sure. OK. I happen to be the, also the library that had the unfortunate, ugly experience with, not, with losing accreditation. Oh. Yeah. Right. So but then you got one of these grants, and what happened? I was able to dedicate a whole lot of time to getting all my ducks in a row and applying for it and succeeded. Not only did I succeed, but we were accredited at the silver level, which is huge for our small library. And because of the accreditation, that's what made applying for the enhancement grant possible. Let me point out also that this uh, loss of accreditation had nothing to do with Tammy. She kind of came on board and things were falling apart, which we didn't know about before she came on board. So she's the one who got it restored through the, through the planning grant and through all the efforts of, of her and her staff. We do have a question for you, Tammy. 
Um, and I'm not, I, that's why I went back to this slide that described the grant because I'm not sure if you have an answer yet. That's why I wanted to go back to this one. Um, so that someone wants to know, um, we're wondering if you're able to get local support to keep the makerspace activities going and to continue to upgrade the materials. Now I see this says that the project completion date is supposed to be not till the end of this year. So are you even beyond to, the, to that point yet or? I do still have some funds to purchase. I already got the main things I wanted, so now I'm being very selective. Now that I've learned what the children enjoy, I know what more to gear towards. Mm -hmm. And yes, I've very much promoted between newspaper articles and Facebook, and I talk to the city council regularly so that they know what's going on. So I have pictures out there. Parents really help promote it. So people in the community, they really appreciate it. So I really think that will help encourage the budget for people, for the city to allow the budget to be increased to keep this going, to enhance it ongoing rate. We keep supporting it. Cool. Tammy, let me go off on one more <clears throat> tangent here, which I think is interesting. Why don't you talk for just a minute about your uh, activities within the Three Rivers Library System? Yes, I'm also the system peer coordinator for a five county group, Antelope, Boone, Madison, Nance, and Platt. And this is kind of a new venture we're doing. But what it is, try to try to promote different learning activities for directors and staff. Try to promote carpooling to make it easier to go to. Um, try to make the director meetings very viable and exciting and learning experiences for everybody. Increase networking. And it's just nice to have someone locally within the group go-to people to open up communication and networking for all the directors. Now, Tammy is the first and so far only one of these people for the Three Rivers Library System. One of the reasons that Anika Ramirez, the system director, felt this was necessary is that her office, of course, is down in Omaha, and there are a whole bunch of public libraries up there in the northeast part of the state. So they came up with this plan about having the peer coordinators, is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. Yes, system peer coordinator. Do you know, have they have they come up with any additional ones at this point, or are you still it? I've not heard that they have gotten anybody else on board yet. Okay, so you're the pioneer, so you're going <laughs> to set the standard for everybody, right, Tammy? No, nope. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's go on to Valentine, if we could. And uh, Chris is going to try to take us through the there photos, which are not all yeah, from we'll there. Just get yes. Up to Anne's unmuted if you want to go ahead. And there we go. <clears throat> um, hello, Anne. This is Reggie. Hello. It's good. <laughs> good morning. Talk. Good to talk to you again. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> you and I have talked quite a bit, haven't we? Because I'm laughing. Yeah. I'm laughing at this completion date. <laughs> 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 That's pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I think that we just put it put it off a little bit because you ran into some problems with, especially with weather in completing. Oh the yeah, project, wasn't it? I should have changed that, and I'm sorry because we did. We changed that on your grant agreement, and I just mm -hmm. this is one of those copy paste errors that pop up every now and then. <laughs> but it's nice to I know that can be adjusted. Yes, that you're oh, nice, absolutely. It, that if, you know, if you don't get something done by the time you know mm -hmm. chat with you, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. We can adjust things. Yeah, yeah. we had. Uh, I mean, it was nice that we had a nice wet summer last year, but it does put uh, you know a cramp on, on certain things. Mm -hmm. But uh, just tell us about your project, and because you certainly are more close to it than I am. <laughs> this was probably the project that gave this librarian gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hint for that. <laughs> In 2010, we did a renovation of the interior of the library where in which we gutted the library. Everything was out of the library, and then we started again and put new shelving and new flooring and stuff like that in here. That wasn't as difficult as the front entrance, which was a much smaller um, project. But whew, it, was a, it, was a, it was a terrific um, trial, and it made me extremely nervous. Um, but and just from the fact that things did not happen according to my timeline. I really like to watch that and I had to learn to adapt and adapt again and again. 
Um, but anyway, the project we had, we had kind of um, an unsafe almost entrance to the library with concrete steps but, and, a, and a handicapped ramp, but the handicapped ramp was a little steep. It didn't have a railing that really helped anyone. It was not usable. Um, I have a friend that um, is in a wheelchair and he showed me that, you know, as far as anything with the handrail on that ramp, it, it did not help him at all. Mm -hmm. Also, um, interestingly enough, his grandfather needed a walker and the, it was steep enough that the handrail on the ramp didn't really help him with the walker, didn't make him feel safe. So we hired an architect to redesign the front. You can see from the picture too that um, there was some spalling and some dark mold in the corners of the old um, steps and so <clears throat> it really did you can't see from this picture that's up there right now about the, you can't see the ramp too much but the, the, the handicapped ramp railing was just a little bit low so it didn't provide anybody with any security or support as they were um, coming into the library and especially leaving because they felt like it was just the grade was just for some reason a little steep so we had an architect come uh, take a look at that and redesign and draw and he made up a, a project manual with um, some renovations that have now been almost complete, almost. We're right at the edge of being done, <laughs> um, which um, we took off all of that handicapped ramp. We took off all of that. So yeah, what you see there is um, everything being um, gone. <laughs> um, from the front entrance the gray hair <laughs> and our dirt pile. And is this the gray hair portion of the project? <laughs> this was the gray hair portion of the project. As they started jackhammering that away, I worried about the windows breaking. I worried about, oh, anyway, um, this, they, they took off all of the front of the project and then began to reconstruct the new, the new portion. What I will say um, that was Oh, you see the bricks that he's working on in this slide? Mm -hmm. um, those were delayed. They came out of Georgia, and mm -hmm. part of our delay was that the bricks were delayed like two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we just were sitting there with every, a dirt pile and no bricks to get going. The footings were all poured and everything was ready, but no bricks. So we waited two weeks for bricks. Anyway, that's now kind of you see some completed pictures there. The other piece I didn't tell you about in the earlier photograph were the railings that as they went down the steps and you can see these new railings where people have a chance now to grab a hold of those and they have assistance going all the way down before the railings were completely ineffective for anybody that needed you know to use a cane or a walker and they wanted to come up the steps um, it was pretty difficult to have the support of a railing so now with this new enhancement they do have um, you know, the, the railing help all the way to the top. And so, I have to tell you that I fell up your front steps at least once. There was something non-standard about the tread. I don't know what that was, like depth or height or something. The or, old ones. Did you really? Ones. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Of course, I'm not too coordinated, but, <laughs> but it really was very strange coming in there. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, you I, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I right. did have we did have a child um, that took a jump off the front, the old front step, and there was an, a piece of aluminum that was holding on a, a carpet piece, and he cracked his head open on that um, piece of aluminum. Um, and his parents didn't really realize it. He kind of started to cry, and they picked him up and carried him halfway down the block. And the next thing we knew, our security cameras were showing this family running into the library with this kid with blood everywhere. <laughs> So we even had to call an ambulance for him, um, and he was not hurt badly, but it, you know how a head wound will bleed. Oh. Um, scared the parents to death, and I'll tell you, it scared us to death too. So hopefully we won't have that again. <laughs> but anyway, as you see, um, the, the grade there from now the handicapped entrance is um, very easily accessible. They built that up so there's no necessary and no need for a railing now. And my friend who is in a wheelchair has told me over and over and over this is just 
rate, it's so much, much easier to navigate. So we have plantings in now, um, landscaping done. Um, we have new benches that were just installed. One of the benches has a crack in it, so it needs to be replaced, and that's our last thing that we're going to do. So there's benches in front of the wall um, and benches out kind of at the end of the handicapped ramp where people can sit down and enjoy the shade of the tree. It's really, it's very, very pleasant now. And I, and I have to tell you, the renovation you guys did in 2010, the interior of your library is absolutely gorgeous. And now the front looks like it finally meets the interior. <laughs> well, it does. And it's really, um, we have a really pleasant little library. Um, we have this, the, the, is it the National Star Party um, here yeah. right now? Where, um, lots of these people come in during the day. To They're from all over. And they're just stunned when can't believe this little library. <laughs> so it's really, um, it's really a nice interior. People are very comfortable in it, and now the exterior looks terrific too. It's wonderful. And um, I, I, one of the things that the um, Kreutz Foundation um, helped us do. I mean, we hiring the architect was very comforting, and I would suggest anybody doing any kind of renovation to a facility have. Um, good engineers and architects, you know, designing and helping you with your project because um, when you get into a small town, sometimes you only have one cement plant or one, you know, construction manager and they want to do things their way and I can say no. Um, in the project manual, he really had it um, designed for this particular reason and so that project manual was worth its weight in gold. It was expensive to do it that way, but it was worth every penny because um, I could just show the plans to the construction manager and he could say, oh yeah, okay, all right, we'll build that this way. Okay, we'll put the, we'll pour it this way. And that was extremely helpful and very comforting to me because I certainly don't know about cement mixes and how much to put into their concoction to make it correct. I have no clue. So that was all taken care of in this project manual. That's yeah, an I was, excellent idea. I was wondering about as you were talking about the um the ramp and the the um obviously the original one and I, maybe it was built before was not because of the, the the grade um not ADA compliant if people were afraid of getting down it was it like being too steep that's something too I think that the architects are going to know it needs to be at this certain angle otherwise mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. in compliance and it's not useful mm -hmm. well some of those well you know they can they can see things too i i had a really hard time visualizing and if if you know this design i i mean it was just really difficult for me to see it cuz i kept saying aren't you are you sure we're not going to need a ramp our hand railing and he said no you won't. And I'm like, are you sure? I just could not. I could not get that into my head that that grade would be so comfort comfortable um, and so gradual the way they have that extended out there that it would not need a railing because all I could see was that descent down the old one, um, which I don't know if it was ADA compliant or not or if it was grandfathered in. I don't. I don't know. But, and I don't even know for sure when that was added to the facility, the original facility, but um, I do know that it was not particularly user friendly. Um, I helped many people I helped many people down that old ramp <laughs> um, and I stood in front of their walker to keep it from sliding away from them. Wow. And one question or one comment about your uh, thing about the the project manual and so forth this I'm, I know I'm going to be drummed out of my gender here, but so typically we have seen with, with smaller libraries, and I've worked in three different states where the construction guys tend to be men, the librarians tend to be women, and the construction guys will come in and try to, and even if they don't say it, they'll have the attitude like, you're a woman, what do you know about this? And when you have that construction manual, you can just say to the construction guy, mm -hmm. do it this way, mm -hmm. and then he will. Can't so really I argue, think yeah. that's a wonderful, a wonderful uh, object lesson. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. It was worth um, the expense of doing it through an architect. And you know, the other thing, when you live in rural Nebraska in the middle of nowhere, you don't even have an architect in your community. So um, I happened to, in my first years of college, work for a firm 
um, and I have a good friend. He's now since retired from his firm, but he comes by and visits us once in a while. And I asked him about it once when he was here. And so this was his firm that did some of this for me. And they did some of it, um, the early parts of that, as much as they could for, um, for free in deference to my old friend. <laughs> And then, you know, did begin to charge us for their time and the production of their project manual. But it was worth every penny. Okay, good advice. And I would also say that uh, the production of, or, or having a production manual would certainly be eligible for funding from the Courts Bennett Donor Advice Fund. I mean, it doesn't have to be bricks and mortar. It can be um, uh, design, architectural drawings, sure. all of those things. Mm -hmm. Well, also with a production, with a project manual mm -hmm. like this, you have some really good estimates um, for your expenses, and even if some of those are, you know, go over a little bit or under a little bit, you still have a pretty good idea of what the project is going to generally cost as a whole. So the project manual was almost my Bible during that time because we used it over and over and over. And actually, they just came in and got it the other day when they were installing a bench for me and said, "Where was this supposed to go?" And I could pull the project manual. I could pull that project manual out and say, "Well, here you go." Good point. And they could see right away um, where that was supposed to be installed. And so have, that. And do you have an idea of how much the total project budget was? Yeah, sixty-five thousand. Sixty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. it looks nice. Mm -hmm. It does. It does look very nice. And I need to say two things. Once a great thank you to the Kreutz Foundation, Kreutz Bennett Foundation, for allowing us to or partnering with us in this project because we would not have been able to do it without them. And the second thing is that it's very wonderful to work with people like Reggie when I can call her and say, I'm not going to get this thing done <laughs> by my <laughs> deadline. Um, we were nowhere near done, sure. but I mean, it, it, we're almost a year later. Um, at one point during this project, when you saw the big dirt pile in the front, we had a rainstorm that was unbelievable in Valentine. Mm -hmm. And so the tamping, you know, the big, the big, looks like a big, um, Oh, I don't know what you call it, a tamper thing, and it's probably about, it probably comes out about up to my chest. That's how big it is. It's a big, heavy piece of equipment. It was in the middle of that oh, place right by the front door, and they were tamping down the dirt as they were firming everything down. That was almost completely underwater. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they had a trench kind of there, and I looked out during that rainstorm, and I mean, the the only thing I could see were the handles of that, where the guys would hold on to the handle. I thought, oh my God, here's this expensive piece of equipment, and it's nearly underwater. It was crazy, crazy. That's how much rain that we had that time, so that delayed them. I mean, they had to get rid of all that water, um, and it delayed the project some as well. But the other thing is that I could say that we had a really wonderful experience was one of the family members was driving through Valentine just a month or so ago, um, coming from South Dakota, I believe. Maybe they were on vacation. And because I had sent pictures updating um, Reggie on what we were trying to get done, <laughs> Um, he had the pictures in his phone and recognized that he had seen these pictures. So he did a U-turn and came back to the library. And I was right in the middle of a board meeting with our board of trustees. So he pops in and he goes, hi, I am, and I can't remember his first name. Was it but Russ? It was so, was it I think so. Or was it Russ? I think so. Yeah, it would be Russ. He, <laughs> I can well, sounds like his yeah. character, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, no, I, mean, I was one of the nephews, I believe, and he popped his head in and said, hi, and I'm from the, you know, Kreutz, you know, I'm one of the nephews, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I was able, it just was a shock, but he had seen the photographs on his, that you had shared with them um, on his phone, and he saw the library, and he thought, well, I'm going to stop in and see him, so I took him out and walked him around through the project a little bit, and was able to introduce him to the Board of Trustees, so that was really a fun moment. Good. How serendipitous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Anne and Tammy, thank you for your time. And uh, Reggie, can you share with our listeners today the essential contact information about these grants? The essential contact <laughs> information is, my name is Reggie Carlson, 
And really the best way to get a hold of me rather than phone is just to email me, and that is R. Carlson at N-E-B-C-O-M-M-F-O-U-N-D dot org. Um, you can download all of the, the guidelines and the short application form if you go to nebraskahometown.org slash fund slash Kreutz hyphen Bennett. And we'll just leave that up there for a minute if people want to take, write that down. Uh, and um, there's a little bit of information about Shirley there. And uh, then, yeah, you Sorry. can download the, the materials that you'll need. And once again, um, um, I'm really encouraging a lot of libraries to apply. We were a little bit low last year for some reason. Yeah. And so um, we have uh, over $80,000 a year that we, can, that we can grant out. In fact, the, donor, the, the advisors have complete control over how much they want to. Yeah. There's no stipulation um, in Shirley Kreutz Bennett's will that says you don't you, you grant out so much per year. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if you've got a great project, please please do apply. Uh, and you've got a couple months to work on it, so get going. Mm -hmm. Before we wrap up, do does anyone have any last minute questions for anybody for Reggie or Richard or um, uh, Ann or Tammy? If you want to ask any last minute questions, get them in now. I just want to thank Reggie for everything that she does over there, too, and for all the good that this fund is doing for public libraries. And Shirley Kreutz Bennett, I mean, she's not with us anymore, but she gave $700,000 mm -hmm. for the use of this thing, and that's really, mm -hmm. that's really quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you can get to the same information by going to our website, where you, mm -hmm. we showed you that earlier. And there's a little bit of information when you get there about Shirley herself, who must have been a really interesting mm -hmm. lady, so mm -hmm. we thank her. Thank you, Reggie, so much. Well, thank you. All right. Um, and actually, I think what we'll do is I'm gonna I can pop it over to there. Um, <coughs> I'll just go back here and show you. This is on our website, um, Library Commission's grants, and it pops out right over here. And there we go. There she there is. is. There, Shirley. Yep. <laughs> So this has all the information, all the applications, and you even have a list here of who got the grants for this year. It's up there. Um, so you got two ways to get to it, so you have no excuse not to send in grants, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. all right? Okay. Everything you need to apply, all and right. then you know, Reggie's info here, of course. All right. All right, so <clears throat> that doesn't look any urgent last-minute questions have come in, which is cool. Um, that will wrap it up for this week's show. Um, it has been recorded. Um, and well, it is being recorded still <laughs> as we're wrapping up, and it will be um, here on our website. This is the um, Encompass Live website. So far, Encompass Live is the only thing called that that I found on the internet. So if you just Google us, um, it comes up um, here to our website here, and all of our archives are here underneath all of our, our upcoming shows. And um, this one will be posted in the see last week's show. I think we had the same about the same as we have now. Yeah, the recording will be here, just like the link is here. Uh, the presentation, um, this PowerPoint will be loaded up there, and um, link to the website for the um, fund on the Nebraska Community Foundation page. We'll have all of that there available for you. And probably by this afternoon, as long as YouTube uh, cooperates with its processing and uploading of things. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that wraps up for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is clouding up, how to use cloud storage. Um, Craig Lefteroff, who is our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, will talk about how to use cloud, cloud resources. Um, this is um, not things like up in the sky, but things sell, <laughs> saved and held <laughs> elsewhere for you that you can um, access and be able to use things remotely from all over the place, Google Drive, Dropbox, other ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, Craig will be with us um, here next week. Um, um, that's next week's show, and you can see our upcoming shows here as well. Go ahead and sign up for any of those. Um, we're always adding new. I've got a couple in the works already for September. As soon as I have things finalized, those dates will be added as well. So keep an eye on our website. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, it's slow, but it's there. There we go. Um, you can um, log in over there, and I wish this would go away, but it doesn't. Um, see um, what's coming up. You can see I do a reminder for the, the current show for today, and whenever the um, recordings are available, I post here as well. Go away. Not no. now. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can go ahead and um, you know like us on Facebook if you are a big Facebook user and keep up with everything we do here on the show. Just get rid of you. 
So that wraps it up for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank <clears> you, <throat> Anne, Tammy, Reggie, Richard. That's everyone. Yes. Um, cool. All right. And just let me see. Nothing last minute has come in. Always check that before I go. So that wraps up for today's show. See you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.